Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the hereditary and evolution. What are we going to talk about the hereditary and evolution. So can I say that heredity is nothing but the transfer of transfer of genetic material. Yes, are you agree with the genetic material is getting transfer. And evolution is a slow change or towards the environment. Evolution is what what gradual change, gradual and very time taking change. So evolution. So heredity we are going to talk about transfer of genetic material. Uh, gen genetic genetic material is transferment. So how they are transferring? What is the process for it? Why they are actually transferring? What information should be there? Okay, and evolution we are going to talk about that. So let's study about it. So the first most thing. The transmission of character from parent to their offspring is known as a heredity. What is a heredity? You can write this definition. A transmission of character. Character is also called as a trait. It's also called as a trait. It's also called as what? Traits. From the parent to their offspring is known as a heredity. Why we have to study that? The study of heredity and variation is known as a genetics. So when you talk about the genetics, what is that? Study of heredity and a variation. Clones are those organisms which are carbon copies of one another. What is clones? Clones are one carbon copy. Variation in the sexual reproductive organisms are caused due to the following factors like environment. Yes or no? Environment is responsible for that. Then crossing over. You know what cross pollination is there, right? So some characters are different. So crossing over will be there. Recombination of a gene. What is recombination? While transferring something gene, recombinant happen. Okay. And mutation. What is mutation? While the transferring genetic information, some codes are mismatched or some is lacking or some misleading information is passed. That is called mutation. Okay. The first study, the first study of inheritance was done by the Mendel on the garden pea plant. He chose a pea plant. Why he only choose the pea plant, not the other plant he has chosen? There is a reason behind that. Because pea plant, because pea plant has a shorter life cycle. Shorter life cycle. So to study, it's very easy because of the shorter life cycle. Okay, Mendel give her give his seven years to study. Because shorter lifespan is there. So once it grows, it can be become a creeper very easily and the flower will be there and pea pod will be there and the pea, inside the pea pod, the peas are there, pieces are there. So this is very easy for shorter life period is there and distinct well characteristic like wrinkle peas, yellow, uh, the flower color is maybe the different, right? So this character is for easy. That's why he choose only the pea plant. Pair condition chromosomes is known as a diploid. This is haploid. When I'm drawing two and that means diploid. Okay. Only in a sexual reproduction, meiosis occur and the haploid cells are incorporated. Unpaired condition of chromosome is known as a haploid. That is N and this is 2L. This point is clear. Okay. So DNA. DNA full form is what? Deoxyribonucleic acid. That is RNA full form ribonucleic acid. It is the genetic material in all organisms. Now, Mendel's law of inheritance. This is very, very important. Mendel's law of inheritance. Law of dominance. Law of segregation. And law of independent assortment. What are they? We're going to talk about that. Don't worry. We're going to talk about that in all the parts. Now, genotype. What is the genotype? Is the composition of a genetic present in organism and the characteristic which is visible in organism is called a phenotype. What is phenotype? A physical appearance. How the plant look like? What is the shape? What is the size? What is the appearance? That is a phenotype. What is genotype? What are genetics? So when two parents cross or a breed to produce a progeny or offspring, then their progeny is called the F1 generation. The first filial generation is F1 generation. The second one, the first generation is called filial. Then second will be the F2 generation. For example, I taken a TT, a tall, tall plant. Okay, pure generation. I can take a TT. A dwarf one. Okay. Now there is a combination of that. So when combined, I'm getting TT. I'm getting TT. So this T is a dominant over here. 
okay why dominant because capital d is showing the dominant all and this is a dwarf which is recessive which is what recessive which is what recessive what is the dominant and recessive who can express dominant is one who can express in heterozygous condition two difference are there still it can be expressed recessive is one who do not express no express okay so f1 generation this is your f1 generation this is your f2 generation now if i take different things if i take this t from the f1 generation and i'm going to this so i'm getting tt first i'm getting tt i'm getting here combination of this and i'm getting the last combination of tt that is dwarf so i'm getting tall i'm getting tall over here and i'm getting dwarf only one dwarf is there so what is the ratio only pure tall is one the dominant one is two and the this is heterozygous this is homozygous pure this is pure homozygous this is heterozygous and this is dwarf is one so what is the ratio i'm getting one is to two is to one i'm getting over here okay so mendel conducted his famous experiment on the pea plant pea plant scientific name is what what is the scientific name by some sativa he used the number of contrasting character like round wrinkle seeds tall short like these are the character like tall t short is t wrinkle is w round is r sorry wrinkle can be like this smaller because the one character is there right white and violet yellow this is yellow color this is violet color for example okay these are the characters during the mono hybrid cross what are the mono hybrid cross let's see here mono hybrid cross what is mono hybrid mono means single mono means single so when tall pea plants are cross when tall t t okay with a short we have just done this right this we have done f1 generation this is what generation f1 generation this is what f1 generation f2 progeny f at tall are not all tall but one quarter of them are short indicating that both tallness and shortness traits were inherited if i do this i am getting this one f2 generation so here tallness is also there dwarfness is also there so tallness and shortness are the traits these are the character who's transmitted okay further f1 but only tallness trait the dominant is one one tallness that was expressed due to the dominance we just have studied that right in dihybrid dihybrid means what what is dihybrid i'm taking t and t dihybrid cross two pairs of contrasting character were considered tall plant with a round seed if I, this is a tall tall okay so if i talking tall and i'm talking round or this one if two contrasting characters are i'm using i will show you the uh the we can say the panet okay, table okay i will show you the table don't worry where cross with a short plant with a wrinkle seed in a f1 generation see here in mono hybrid i'm only contrasting with a one character here i'm taking a two or more characters so one selfing this f1 plant with f2 produce tall plants with the round seed short plants with a wrinkle seed what is this exactly let's study that okay i'm going to show you that just one second okay so i was talking about this okay suppose i'm talking about this is what mendel selected a pea plant having the two pair of the character shape and the color now what we're talking about we are not a mono hybrid we are considering what tie hybrid of two character one character is shape one character is color so he selected the plant having a round yellow seed round yellow seed how can you write r r y y round this will be yellow color this will be yellow color this will be round shape so they are round and like which color yellow one and wrinkle wrinkle green seed is what capital r capital r was round small r for wrinkle one and yellow was converted into what green green seed as capital sorry small y will be there now in the f1 generation so they took this f1 generation for dihybrid what is dihybrid more than one character two character we are considering so what is happening over here this table look at this table can you look at this table what going to happen r y r y r y r y and this when we combine it we get a 16 we get a 16 combination okay once we get a 16 combination you can get this 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 out of that what is happening over here out of that see 
where the self pollinated f2 generation they undergo f2 generation out of 16 how many we getting when to take a monohyoid we get a four one one is two two is to one ratio one for tallness pure tall will be there two for heterozygous tall is there and one for dwarf if you take a di hybrid you get a 16 one so out of that nine round are rry so out of 16 out of 16 how many are there nine was nine r r r capital y this will be capital y and small this is what they get a round yellow they get what round yellow three had round green they also got round green that is what the round is dominant one r is dominant even they have recessive thing now green for green is what small wires are there then again three wrinkle yellow wrinkle yellow is what this part r r capital y r r capital y capital y is what yellow and this small y is for this and one one they got a this part getting my point so out of 16 nine was this one round yellow three was round green three has wrinkle so everything is expressed and even dwarfness i mean you can you can say the last one is also got expressed that is cap small r r y y that is what wrinkle green which should not be expressed but it's very expressed so everything is getting expressed over here <coughs> so what is the ratio nine three three one is the ratio <coughs> So in dihybrid, what is the ratio? 9, 3, 3, 1. In a monohybrid ratio was 1 is to 2 is to 1. So ratio of 1 is there. Which one? The recessive one is also getting expressed. This point is clear? Okay. Let's move further. This is the table. Again, we got to talk about that. Okay. So this point is very much clear to you. Okay. So we got the ratio. In the case of mono monohybrid, what is the ratio we got? 1 is 2, 2 is to 1. In case of dihybrid, we got the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So recessive also getting expressed. Okay, we can't deny that. Now, let's talk about this. This is the outline of the chapter. DNA is the source of making protein in a cell. Are you agree with this? DNA is the source of making protein in a cell. Exactly correct. The section of DNA that provides information for one protein is called a gene. So on the DNA, this is the DNA, suppose. Okay, these are the fragments. This particular part, this particular part, it's provide information for one protein. That is called gene. Okay, so physical and chemical basis of hereditary is what? This is DNA. So sex determination is a process by which sex of the person is determined. All humans chromosome. Now you know that male, 23 chromosome, female, 23 chromosome, zygote will be there. But female is going to give you XX chromosome only. That is a sex chromosome, XX. So she is not responsible for the determination of the uh, gender of a fetus or a baby. Only the male is responsible. Male pattern have a XY chromosome. All human chromosomes are not paired. 22 pairs are called autosomes. And out, see, out of 23, 22 are called autosomes. And plus one is called a sex chromosomes. Okay. Those who are responsible for the determination of gender of the fetus. Women have a perfect sex chromosome that is XX. But may have a X, Y combination. So can I talk about 22 plus X, Y? It's a male. If I write instead of this, uh, if I write X, X, so it's a female. It is a sequence of gradual changes which takes place in the primitive organisms over the millions of the year in which new species are formed. So what is evolution? A gradual changes will be there. So there are some evidence of the evolution, such as the homologous organ, analogous organ. The moment I talk homologous organ means they have a same structure. They have a same structure. They have a same structure, but different function. Like frog, frog forelimb and human forelimb. Different functions are there, but the structure will be same. They are homologous. Analogous means what? A bat and the bird. Four limbs are for flying. So they have a same function, but different, different structure. Structure. Okay, that's okay. 
so theory of evolution in the fossils we are going to study that so this is only outline i'm going to tell you now i'm going to show you ppt so theory of evolution is what darwin's theory of evolution is there what the darwin theory says charles robert explain evolution principle in his famous book the origin of species the theory proposed by his popularly known as theory of natural selection what is the natural selection for example me and my friend my friend is little bit have a uh, fatty fatty so example if i go to the winter season definitely the those who have the fat more they can survive very nicely in case of me i will not able to survive properly i need a lot of things to carry but in case of summer a very heat uh, heat is there that time what going to happen i will be surviving in that case because natural selection is was i don't have adipose tissue so sweating is very less as compared to the fat one so that is the natural selection so this is just example so the main feature of theory natural selection as over production limited food and space if the fish tank is there okay suppose you have fish tank there are two three fishes are there okay these are fishes imagine okay now now what is the th thing you are not going to change the water you just going to add food once only okay just once food what going to happen what are the food is available fish can eat very nicely but the point come there is no food so fish trying to eat themselves and the point come they will die so if the food availability is not there obviously the evolution is not happening over there struggle for the existence they are struggling for the existence then variation they try to variation they try to accommodate whatever there they can eat it natural selection or survival of for the fittest survival for the fittest will be the point over here okay now speciation and what is fossils we go to study about in the ppt so let's start with the paper okay as i told you we going to start with the ppt so here is the ppt so what is hereditary the transfer of a character for a trait from the parent to the trait of offspring what is offspring what are the children of fetus is going to happen character or a traits trait is not group of character now variation the difference between the characters or a traits among the individual of the same species same species is called a variation the species has to be same for example can you see the parrots the color is changing the stay our same species but what is the difference change in color so this is a variation can you see the beetle's color is brown only green beetle is there so this is a variation grapes variation leaves variation dogs variation right so please write this definition that is very very important now let's talk about the accumulation of variation during the reproduction what is accumulation when the organisms reproduce the offspring show a minor variation obviously they show the minor variation we are not exactly copy of our parents we have a variation in a skin color maybe in our appearance so due to the inaccuracies in dna see what is happening 23 chromosomes 23 chromosomes from there but whenever the process come copy down definitely there are some inaccuracies and that's good if they very are minute that's good if that is problematic then a mutation will be there so inaccuracies in dna copying this variation are less in asexual what is asexual no variation almost at all why only single parent is there but here two parents are involved so sexual reproduction include the variation and more in a sexual reproduction because of the presence of two parents okay now some variations are useful variation and they help you know organization to adjust to the changes in the environment for example look at this this is the bear but which one polar bear now if suppose forest bear is a brown color if i put that forest bear into the snow region area what going to happen it is easily easily distinguishable so maybe there are chances of survival are very less he can't even find a prey why prey can easily identify something is coming right but if the polar bear color is this so it is little it it can be useful for hide himself right so that is a change so this survival are important some variation do not help in organism to adjust to the changes to the environment and they may die some are not able to problem it now can you see something this is a green color insect it is hide himself as a such a way that is a green color leaf is there right now what is happening in this case you can easily distinguish between this beetle if the beetle is green it can be easily hide into the green color but if the beetle is red crow can easily find out and eat it right so some are useful some are not useful changes okay 
So here are the points. Let's go to next point. Rules for inheritance. What are the rules for inheritance? Characters are the transfer through the genes present in the DNA molecule, in the chromosomes present in the nucleus of the cell. The inheritance of the characters is due to the fact that both the father and mother contribute to equal amount of genetic material. So they are giving equal amount of genetic material. What is happening at a zygote level? That is a different thing. So so far, each trait are two factors. Now, zygote is going, zygote is getting, I'm like, from all, we are getting from here one character, one character from here. Now, there is a decision should be there. Which character should be there? Eye color is, mother eye color is uh, black, father is blue. What is going to happen? You can't predict it. It has to be there. Once it forms, then only we can understand. So, one from the father and one from the mother character we're getting. Mendel conducted experiment with a garden pea plant. We just have studied about that, right? So who is responsible for the genetic information transfer? DNA is there. Okay, yes, exactly. What do you say? That's correct. But inside the cell, there are chromosomes. Chromosome is ultimately nothing but binding of a binding of a DNA, right? At the ultimately, we get a DNA. That is the genes we are getting. Okay, so that's the point over here. Now, this experiment we have already done, right? We already done in earlier. So, see, cross pollination, cross fertilization. If this is a violet color, this is white color, you get a nice color over here. But in the second, first generation is a in first generation, you may have this character, also this character when he express at the F2 generation. So, F1 generation, there is a almost all dominant one, but in F2 generation, the recessive also there. Similarly, here, yes, okay. Okay, we already done this. Very good. Done this. Now, sex determination. Who is responsible for sex determination of the fetal gender? Male. Male is responsible for that. See, we have a 23, a total 46 chromosome. Okay, cell. But uh, when there is a sexual reproduction, 23 we getting from a male, 23 getting from a female. Now, what is this 23? Out of 23, 22 are autosomes. Autosomes. And one pair is sex chromosomes are there. And these are responsible. In case of male, XY is present. That one is XY. In female, XX is there. So male, XY. She is going to give you X only. So when there is an XS combination, female is there. XY combination, male is there. So who is responsible if a sperm having the X chromosome fuses with the egg having X, female will be there. Okay, girl child will be there. If the sperm having the Y chromosome and uh, the egg having X chromosome, there is no changes. Only X will be there. The baby boy will be there. So who is responsible for sex determination? Yes. Okay, now variation may not help organize some to the survive. So variation can be three types. Let's see. First, some variation. Let's take another color. It will be better. Some variation. Some variation help organization. Or not organ, organism. Not organization. I'm sorry. Organism to survive. Example, there are some beetles living in a green bushes. They are living in a green bushes. They increase their numbers by reproduction. Obviously. But what is the problem? Crows can easily see the red beetles. If the red beetle is from the green bushes, definitely crow can see an idiot. So now what they are thinking? Oh, because of the red color, I'm getting killed. So my new generation should do not have a green color. Sorry, red color. I'm sorry, red color. So they are eaten by the crows. During the reproduction, due to the some variation, some green beetles are produced instead of a red beetle. Okay. The green beetles are not visible to the crow at all right now and they do not eaten by the things. But what is the problem right now? Now there is a population of green beetle increases. Now, this is going to create a problem on the bushes because they will eat much more. Cross was there to maintain the number of that, right? Then, gradually, the population of the red beetle decreases and the population of green beetle increases. This variation has helped. This variation helped to whom? The green beetle to increase the population. But there is a problem. What is the there is a problem now? The problem, the problem is not for beetle. The problem is for green bushes right now. But the problem of who solved beetles. Now they are from red to green right now. They can hide themselves. A uh, crow is not able to eat. So this is help. Now, some variation do not help. Do not help. How? 
during the sexual reproduction color of variation occur in a red beetles and some blue beetles also produce so they want to become a green but as the second generation told you recessive segments also there so with the green there are blue color is also there now blue color is what easily identifiable identical distinguishable crow also eat them so red wants to be stopped so they convert into green but obviously recessive character because of that blue color was there so instead of red beetles both the red and blue beetles are visible to the crows they can't population is decreases but red will be there majority will be the green but red and blue are also there so blue are also there written by the earlier only red was there now blue is coming to the picture then the population both red and blue decreases this is not help to survive now what is going to happen if the population increase but the source for the there what is energy what, what is that green color plant green bushes was there now population increases definitely they will eat more so as they eat more if the population beetles increases and the plants are affected by the disease plant get affected now then the food availability is decreases for the beetle and their body weight also decreases they will be now shrink okay if after few years availability of the food increases then the body weight also increases if the food is more body weight will increase but this character become motu and patlu they are not able to transfer gaining weight is a character which is not able to transfer to next generation they can transfer this green color and blue color but this is not transferable so acquired traits cannot be passed from the one generation to the next generation this three, three points are clear first it's helping but population is increased but it is affected by plant resources are less right now so it is now the weight gain is decrease in case of not helping blue color along with the red now there is a blue color generation is there so this is problematic so variation can be this one okay you wanted to write this all okay can i move okay let's go further now speciation what is speciation a particular speciation formation of a new species from an existing species a new species is going to form so what is happening in this case the formation of new species from the existing species is mainly due to the one or more of the following factors they are accumulation of the variation variation can be accumulated physical barriers genetic drift natural selection what is that first is accumulation first is what accumulation one second let me take a black one first is what accumulation of a variation what is accumulation the difference between the individual of the same species is called a variation in the same community suppose something is happening something mutation or inaccuracy this dna is happening the new species is going to form that is variation in the accumulation now the whatever the species is going to form it also going to produce its own community the uh, the eyes of the cat is blue only one is there if he get mate with the another partner and his daughters and uh, no, i mean like the children or the babies are going to form a same color of the eye now they are going to send this message to all these generation so there is a new generation is going to form so from one one is recessive over there but that is forming so this isolated groups produce sorry variation over the several generation they can vary the several generation can be do now the next one physical barrier population may get separated by the physical barrier like a mountains here is one community here is another community and there is the mountains so they because of the resources are quite different you can say in oman or india resources are quite different right so reverse like these isolated groups produce variation which can produce the new species that is physical barrier are there then genetic drift what are the genetic drift over here natural calamities or introduction of a new members right now population of the area is particularly true because of the natural calamities people move from here to there that's a migration but suddenly introduction of the new genetic in the particular area leads to what genetic drift so of the same species in an area can produce the changes in the gene pool of the population and new variations are produced which can be produce new species so same community is there some same species is there because of the natural calamities something is problem happening like for example hiroshima nagasaki atomic bomb was there so whatever the generation is right they are paralysis or they are have no having a limbs or some neurogenerical neuro degenerative problems are there but 
same species is going to continue because of the atomic uh, radiation exposure. So that is a genetic drift. Now, natural selection, only those individual species which have a useful variation and can adapt to changes in the environment, they can be changed. For example, in case of dinosaurs, they couldn't survive properly. Why? Because they do not withstand the environment. But the crocodile, cockroach from same generations, they are still alive because they have adapted themselves. So natural selection is there. Now migration. You know migration. Some individuals of the species may migrate to the new geographical area and adjust to the changes in the environment. There and develop a new variation and produce a new species. They will produce a new species. So speciation is the formation of new species. Included what? Accumulation of the variation, physical barrier, genetic drift will be there, natural selection and migration will be there. So this point is very clear to you. Okay. Now, evolution. This is very, very important part over here. The gradual changes taking place in a living organism giving rise to the new organism due to the changes in their genetic composition. So evolution is the result of what? Changes in a genetic, genetic composition. Okay. So inherited traits. What are the traits inherited and acquired? Inherited means what? The traits are in organism due to the changes in the genetic composition. If the genetic composition inside the body is happening, genetic composition changing, it can be passed from one generation to another generation. So inherited traits can be passed from one generation to the second generation. But there are acquired traits which not able to pass. For example, I have learned the driving. Once my baby will be produced, he is able to drive? No, he has to learn. So this characteristic I can't transfer. Genetic information I can transfer, right? So acquired traits are the which traits which acquired by an organism over the lifetime and cannot be passed from one generation to the another and does not result in the evolution. So acquired traits are not evolution. Inherited traits are included in a evolution. Getting my point? Okay, please write this inheritance and acquired. Just this definition, this and this. This is very, very important. I'm giving you time to write it. Now we are going to move to the evidence of evolution. Why we have to study evolution? Because evolution is a gradual, small, uh, very small, small and long time period changes. To study evolution, we get the idea of the, what is the initial one? So there are a number of common features in the different organisms which prove evidence to show the evolutionary relationship. So why we want to study evolution? To show the evolutionary relationship between the animals something. Because every, see, uh, every animals are have us mostly the same origin. We can say, the, say that, but we need that find the origin. Okay, the main evidence of the evolution are from the study of homologous organ. What is homologous? Same, analogous are different and the fossil. So we're going to study about homologous organ Analogous organ and the fossils. So what are they? Let's see here. When I talk about the homologous, this question can be arise. Okay. Organs which are similar in structure but different in a function. We have just seen earlier. So the four limb of amphibians, like example, is frog. Reptiles, birds, and mammals have the similar structure but a different function. It look like same. Don't you think so? Not exactly same, but look like same. The four limb is almost same, but function. For example, uh, frog, amphibian, uses its forelimb to raise the front of the body, like from the water, okay? Lizard reptile uses the forelimb for the walking and running. Birds use the forelimb for modified as a wing or flying. Mammals use the forelimb for grasping, walking, running, swimming, and the flying. Okay, this show evolutionary relationship. So what is the homologous? Structure will be the same, but the function will be different. Like forelimbs in frog, forelimbs in reptile, forelimbs in lizard, forelimbs in the birds. It is there, okay? Now, let's talk about the this one. Can you see a same skeletal structure is mostly found in human, in dog, dolphin. Okay, this can you see that? Not exactly same, but same. So, this is a homologous structure. This is what? Homologous structure. Different selection pressure. Like for walking is different. For handling is different, right? So, let's go further and try to understand analogous organs. The What, the, what are the analogous organs? The moment I talk analogous organ means what? Analogous means what? According to you, what is analogous? Hmm? Are organs which are different in a structure but similar in a function. That is called a analogous. So the wings of the butterfly, birds and bat 
What is the function? To fly. But can you see the structures are quite different. So homology, analog, homology and analogy is actually give the relationship between the between the evolutionary relationship. So these are the homologous and analogous we have covered here. Now fossils. Yes, we have to study the fossils. Fossils can be anything. Like we can say fossils are nothing but the impression of the animals, which is um tremendous under the pressure, right? Mostly we get oil from the fossil only. Fossil fuel is nothing but the oils. All the remains organisms which live long ago. From the study of fossils, we can know their structures and the time period in which they are lived, right? The fossils of the complex and the recent organisms are found closer to the surface of the earth and the fossils of simpler organisms are found deeper inside the earth. The age of fossil can be determined by the radiocarbon dating, RCD, radiocarbon dating. The study of fossil shows the again evolution relationship, right? So this is all about the fossil. In examination question can be asked, what is the fossil? You have to write this information over there. You wanted to write now? Okay, okay, okay. Take your time. Okay, let's move to the evolution by stages. See, evolution don't happen very quickly. It go by step by step. So complex organisms and its organ develop from the simpler organisms gradually over the generation. So over generation is the time taken by it. Yes or no? So evolution of the eyes. Whose eyes? A planaria. Can you see that? This is not an eyes. Actually, this is a two dots. Actually, it look like eyes, but they are why? What is the use of eyes to the planaria? There is no use. But they are just the eyes for to detect the light. It develops gradually into the complex or into the higher animals, right? Evolution of the feather. Feathers in case of they ideally develop on the dinosaurs for a cold purposes, like to prevent from the cold. So first develop in the dinosaurs and use for the protection from the cold. Later birds use for the flying. Okay. Fine. So can you say that this is a connecting link between the birds? We can say that. Now evolution by artificial selection. Like humans cultivate wild cabbage over the 2000 more than 2000 years and produce different vegetables from this it by artificial selection so what we want cabbage we want a cabbage in a such a way that the distance between the two leaf is not that much there so if a naturally doing that the leaf will be open what is the cabbage a major bird is there bird vegetable bird is cabbage so we produce such a way that there is no distance between the two different leaves will be there so cauliflower by selecting sterile flower we don't this is a flower only and we don't want it should be get fertilized. Why? Because we want to eat it. Then, by selecting the large leaves. Kale is what? A large leaves. Then, this by selecting the swollen tube. Can you see that? A swollen tube is there. And obviously, broccoli by arresting the flower growth. These are the flowers. I don't want a flower. And uh, male do not want, uh, human do not want a flower should be there. Otherwise, it is not eatable. So, we are what doing? Artificially doing it. So natural is not present. Artificially, there is an evolution is happening. Okay. This point is clear. Now, embryology. What is embryology? Study of an embryo. Can you see that initial embryos are almost same? But when they grow, they can show the distinguish. Can you see the pig is over here? This is, okay, this is pig. This is turtle. This is pig. This is human. So can I say that? See, see, see. Oh, what is happening? Initially stages, can you say that this stage, they look like similar? In a second stages, almost similar, but in third stages, they get distinguished between that. Okay. So these are the things. Now, the last part, almost, the evolution should not be equated with a progress. Evolution is not a progress. Evolution is what? Evolution has not result of the progress. No at all. Not a progress. It is a has a resulted in the formation of several complex species from the simpler species. Simpler species hence a problem. So they do the complex things. And while doing the complex thing, they have developed something. So due to the variation. So can I say evolution is nothing but a variation long over the period of time. So genetic drift, natural selections are the responsible for that. This does not mean that one species get eliminated when new species are formed. No. There was a green beetles was there, red beetles was there, and a blue beetles was there. So species are formed or the new species are better than the older species. So they are advanced. 
for example right now our planet for example our planet is not that much techno savvy the way we are techno savvy so they have transferred some information but what is our extra usp point is over what is that extra important point we are techno savvy okay so several species which could adapt the changes in the environment still continue to survive for the example bacteria human beings have a not evolved from the chimpanzees we are not chimpanzees we are uh, developed from the homo sapiens species only that species willing to do something okay so they had a common ancestor from which they evolved separately human beings are not the pinnacle of evolution but they are only one species not only human beings are uh, evolved there are many species got evolved according to their will according to your work right human evolution homo sapiens right homo sapiens are there there is a great diversity among the human beings in their form we are originated from africa so are we african we are not african right now because we are staying in some area from africa some people go to the india some africa some people go to the uh, desert part so according to the environment there are changes some go to china so in case of china you can see the eyes are there so according to the environment everything is changes some of them stay there and other migrated to different places okay parts of the world then due to the genetic variation this is what continuously staying over the generation to generation there are changes in the appearance of earth and the environmental changes in the different geographical why they moved for the food purpose only okay in their forms of feeders so earlier they want a food in a search of food they move here and there and once they got cultivation area that is called farming they stayed there stay back there okay so they don't want to move again the last part this so can you see something here nearly all expert agree lucy was a just three foot tall chimpanzee okay so what is there are we a chimpanzee no from the chimpanzee they develop into what pocket man now netherland man was like this so there is a variations are there we can't de de uh, go detail in this but evolution is what slow and steady changes are found over there okay so these are regarding the evolution that we study so i have, i hope you understood every points and in detail right okay that's great so do you have any doubt about this okay so we'll meet in the next class for the same thing